Sizing your main line when planning an irrigation system is very important. Too small of a main line, and you could experience too much loss of pressure from friction. Too large, and you might overspend on materials. Today, I'm going to show you two ways to size an irrigation main line. The first is just some general rules you can follow if you have a smaller system or you're brand new to this. The second will go into a bit more depth, including some of the math and physics involved in sizing a main line. And that's a great method if you have a very big system or it's a commercial system. First, for those with smaller systems who just want some good rules of thumb to follow, you can follow the recommended maximum run lengths and flow rates we have for one quarter inch up to one inch polytubing. For one quarter inch, that's 30 feet maximum length and 30 gallons per hour maximum flow. For half inch, that's 200 length and 200 gallons per hour. For three quarter inch, it's 480 feet maximum length and 480 gallons per hour maximum flow. And finally, for one inch, we have 960 maximum length and 960 gallons per hour in maximum flow rate. Those thresholds are generally where you'll see the friction loss and velocity curves start to get pretty steep. And that's something we're gonna dive into in the remainder of the video and show you how we determine that. If those general rules were all the information you needed and you're ready to move on in the design process, check out the video there in the top right. It's a step-by-step -step guide to design a drip irrigation system. For those who are gonna be using a bigger diameter or a different material or simply want a more in-depth explanation, there are three main factors we're primarily concerned with when we're sizing a main line. The material used, the overall length of that line, and the flow rate going through it. Now, the material used is usually PVC or poly in irrigation. These variables determine how much friction loss will be incurred and the velocity of the water inside the main line. Friction loss and velocity matter in irrigation because too much friction loss can cause a lot of pressure loss and you may not end up with sufficient pressure to achieve optimal operation of your emitters. Too much velocity and you can even cause damage to components in your system. So, for those reasons, it is very important to account for both when you're sizing a mainline. The first step to sizing your mainline is to determine what type of material you'll be using. Different material types, such as PVC and polyethylene, experience different rates of friction loss. We've added a link below and in the top right to friction loss charts for common mainline materials like polytubing and PVC. This will make it easy for you to follow along for your own system. In this video, I'm going to show you two examples, one with a standard polytubing mainline and one with a Schedule 40 PVC mainline. For our first example, a tree irrigation system. We need to irrigate a line of trees that will serve as a privacy screen. The distance from the hose bib to the last tree in line is going to cover 280 feet. There'll be a tree about every five feet for a total of approximately 56 trees. Each tree will have a drip line tree ring with eight 0.5 gallon per hour emitters around it. This means each tree will receive four gallons per hour of water. And now if we multiply that by our 56 trees, we have our system flow rate of 224 gallons per hour. We now have our three variables. We got our system flow rate, our line length, and the material that we're using. Okay, let's start using these three variables to first determine our system's friction loss. There are two formulas commonly used to determine friction loss, the Hazen-Williams formula and the Darcy-Weisbeck formula. Our online calculator uses the Hazen-Williams formula. The Hazen-Williams formula isn't quite as robust and that it is limited to only water. However, for irrigation purposes, that's all we're really concerned about for the most part. Using our handy online friction loss, or as it is called on our website, pressure loss calculator, linked below, we can see how much friction loss will be suffered in multiple diameters of our polytubing. One quarter inch tubing, of course, is out of the question. The line length is much too long, and if you were to try to use it, the friction loss would be in the thousands of pounds of pressure. And 280 feet of one half inch main line with 224 gallons per hour going through it, the pressure loss from friction would be 16.4 PSI. Now, this loss is significant enough that emitters at the end of the system would be putting out less water than those at the start, very likely enough to be detrimental to the overall health of our irrigation system and our plants. Bumping that up, 224 gallons per hour going through 280 feet of three quarter inch mainline, by contrast, would only lose 3.6 PSI from friction, a fairly minimal amount. All right, let's touch a bit on velocity. The general rule in the irrigation industry is that water velocity should be always kept to under five feet per second. Higher than that, and components can become damaged, particularly fittings like elbows and tees, the water runs into a lot, and important components like valves. 
Unlike friction loss, we don't need to know the linear length of our line to determine velocity. On the screen now, and linked in the description, is the formula you can use to determine velocity in your irrigation lines. All you actually need to know is the flow rate in gallons per minute and the inside diameter of your tubing or pipe. Fortunately, we have already gathered this information. We will just need to convert our gallons per hour into gallons per minute. To do so, simply divide your gallons per hour by 60. For our pipe inside diameter, you don't want to enter the nominal size, which is one half inch expressed as a fraction. You want to enter the actual inside diameter. The most common size of polytubing that we're using is 0 0.600 inches inside diameter. Simply plug those in to the appropriate places and solve the formula and you have your velocity in feet per second. If you prefer to skip the math, Washington State University has a handy velocity calculator you can use by inputting those very same variables into their calculator. In fact, their calculator uses the exact same formula. We'll put the link in the video description right after the formula. 224 gallons per hour, or 3.733 gallons per minute, going through one half inch tubing has a water velocity of 4.24 feet per second. 4.24 feet per second is within the parameters of the five feet per second rule. Between the answers you get for friction loss and velocity, you want to go with a mainline size that falls below five feet per second with as low as friction loss as possible. But a good rule of thumb is to pick the next largest pipe size beyond what is technically under five feet per second. It's always good to minimize friction loss as friction causes wear on components, but it is a balance between that and the cost of a larger diameter mainline. So, in our case, three quarter inch is a good number to land on. 224 gallons per hour going through three quarter inch tubing has a water velocity of 2.27 feet per second. That 2.27 feet per second is well within the parameters of the five feet per second rule. This illustrates why it's important to check both water velocity and friction loss, as the friction loss in a half inch tubing would be incredibly high. So, we're gonna follow the rule and go with the next largest pipe size up. Three quarter inch tubing is well within the five feet per second rule and minimizes friction loss. We could have went with a half inch mainline, but this would have been pushing it a bit. And if we ever wanted to expand our system, we'd have very little margin to work with. Let's take a look at one more example. This one using schedule 40 PVC pipe as a mainline to irrigate a field of row crops. In this example, let's say our PVC pipe is 200 feet long and leads to a field that consists of 44 120 foot rows. Those 44 rows will be irrigated by drip tape that has a 0.25 gallon per hour emitter and is spaced every 12 inches. With that information, we can determine almost everything needed to size a mainline for the proposed system. The material is PVC. We have 200 feet of mainline length and 22 gallons per minute as our system flow rate. The polytubing calculator won't work here since we're going to be using PVC, and it's likely we'll need a diameter larger than one inch, which is the largest the calculator does. To size our mainline here, we'll have to use the friction loss charts for PVC. Reading the charts is pretty straightforward. The rows are where you'll find your gallons per minute, and all you need to do is locate your system's flow rate in this row. In this case, for us, that is 22 gallons per minute. The columns on the chart give us two important pieces of data for each diameter of pipe the pressure loss in pounds per square inch for every 100 foot of pipe, and the velocity of the water in that diameter of pipe based on the flow rate in gallons per minute. What makes it even easier to read is that velocities over five feet per second are shaded, meaning that the diameter of the pipe is too small for the indicated flow rate. To calculate the friction loss, all you have to do is add the number for every 100 feet of pipe. For our sample system here, that means the smallest pipe size we could use is one and one quarter inches, where the velocity is at 4.85 feet per second, and the friction loss is 2.92 PSI for every 100 feet of pipe. You'll recall our sample system uses 200 feet of pipe, meaning our total friction loss is 5.84 PSI. If I want to minimize these even further, I could simply bump it up to one and a half inch pipe, which would see a velocity of 3.55 feet per second and a friction loss of 1.37 PSI for every 100 feet of pipe. That gives us a total of 2.74 PSI friction loss for the 200 feet of pipe in our example. Now that you have the knowledge you need to properly size your mainline, you could avoid the pitfalls of having one that costs way too much because it's too large or having one that's too small and impacts the performance of your irrigation system. If you'd like to learn more about drip irrigation, check out our Getting Started with Drip Irrigation playlist right here.